Hi everyone, this is Ramanuj from Lawsico. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today's topic is understanding private wealth law practice in India. And we'll just get started now. I'll just pull up the slides. Okay. Uh, while we are getting started, why don't you introduce yourselves in the chat? Just tell me who you are, where you are logging in from, what do you do? I see there's Nihita, Shankaran, Simran, uh, others. Please introduce yourselves. In the chat, tell me what you do, where are you from? What are your questions today? If there's something specific you want to hear today. All right, let's get started. So understanding private wealth law practice in India. Uh, what is private wealth law practice? You may not have heard of this before, but it is one of the very uh, attractive areas of practice today for law firms. Um, so there are many very wealthy people in India, the globalization and economic growth over the last three decades have uh, led to a rapid rise in number of millionaires and billionaires in India. Okay, so uh, the private wealth law practice relates to these uh, very wealthy individuals who are typically called HNIs, high net worth individuals and ultra HNIs Okay, EU HNIs, ultra high net, uh, high net worth individuals. So private wealth management itself is an area of work and there are family offices, there are the there's there's entire sector called private banking. And these people, this is still at a sort of a nascent stage compared to other countries like in the US, um, in uh, China and some other places there is much more uh, work in terms of private wealth management, right? An area of practice, as an area of practice, it's much bigger because they have many more uh, ultra wealthy individuals in those countries, right, compared to India. But at the same time, India is also pretty big, you know, it's getting bigger by the day. And you know, one reason why it is so interesting for law firms is obviously because if you are a law firm, uh, you want to have these clients because these clients, if, if you are the go-to lawyer for these clients, then it's not only these this work that you get, you end up getting a lot of other work as well, right? Because you will be called up to like... If you are the go-to lawyer for them, then high chances you will be the go-to lawyer for their business as well. Or when they are in a tricky litigation or tricky business problem or a big transaction, there are high chances that they will consult you or your law firm in turn, right? So uh, for a lot of uh, law firms today, this is like a really high priority area, right? So they want to build very strong private wealth uh, law practice. Okay. Uh, so, who are HNIs and UHNIs? Network individuals. There is a definition, right? So, can 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 someone tell me what is the definition of a high net worth indi uh, individual or ultra high net worth individual? Any idea? I'll wait for you to respond. Take a guess. How much money should one have to be called an HNI in India? Don't you want to know? You probably want to know, right? Or you must be curious. So take a guess. Take a wild guess also, no problem. Anybody wild guesses? Well, nobody saying anything. Okay, so I, I will share some information with you about this. 
right so according to business standard etia has around 6000 people okay who are who can be called ultra high net worth individuals okay sorry uh, high uh, can we call h and i is not ultra high net worth but high net worth individuals okay uh, so just to give you some numbers in usa high net worth individuals or hni is a classification used to define people who have a net worth of usd 30 million or more when it comes to india carvi private wealth defines hni as people who have more than 5 crore in investable surplus so if you have at least 5 crore rupees money that is surplus for you you don't need to you don't mean to spend it but you want to invest it then you technically qualify as an hni in india right and if you have more than 25 crores then you will be considered to be a ultra hni okay as as per indian it's but this is different if you go to some of the other places right so so this is very interesting that way it's not the same everywhere okay <clears throat> just a moment okay so uh, can you do you guys know like some examples of uh any any hni is sorry ultra high net in, uh, net worth individuals for example film stars for example people who own businesses right so there are many people that you know of who are hni or ultra hni right or i mean we if not else we read, read about them in newspapers and so on right okay so uh let's get back to our slides of course just a moment uh and yeah, i don't know if slides are not working i can't load them anyway even without slides there is no problem i can just continue all right so 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 we just talked about hni is an ultra hni right so the next question is that what are family offices this is the other important uh, concept that you do want to know about. what are the family offices right uh, family offices are private wealth advisory firms right they are set up by the hni or ultra hni uh, you know to professionally manage and invest their wealth right they are wealth management uh, uh, wealth management advisory firms who are different from traditional wealth management shops a family office offers exclusive and a total solution kind of a service to a client in helping them manage their financial and investment port portfolio but usually the family office has only one client right so uh, such hnis often hire top investment professionals to run their family offices and manage their wealth effectively so today there was a very interesting news uh, in the cane where they talked about premji invest premji invest is a uh, by is, is set up by ajim premji right ajim premji is a uh, you, you cannot you must have heard of him he, is, he was one of the found, he is the founder of wipro right and he had a massive wealth personal wealth and a part of that he invested into premji invest and this premji invest is a actually also an endowment for um, for the premji foundation okay so they have a foundation and the money that is provided in endowment by ajim premji uh, this money is supposed to generate a certain amount of return and that return is then used for charity through the foundation right to keep it at the same pace so that endowment doesn't grow smaller but at least keeps it at the same place you have to generate significant returns right so if you want to spend 5% every month and then you have to also beat inflation which is at 
let's say so 8 plus 5 is 13 percent so 13 percent or in inflation can go up 10 percent also sometimes so then 13 to 15 percent you have to generate at least to uh, simply to keep the spend some money as well as at least make sure that your endowment is not becoming smaller corpus of money that has been put is not becoming smaller the idea is to further grow it so then the family office has been managing to grow it at 20 percent or more year on year which is a great thing because it's a, it's a it's considered a very good performance for a family office but this is a case where uh, the family office is responsible for doing this and they have invested in a lot of uh, big companies as a private equity investor, right? So we invest has invested money in India as well as in China, in USA, so in, in companies, right? So as a private equity investor and uh, some of those deals have gone bad, like the news was that they invested in Suviksha, a store of retail chains that shut down. They had invested in, um, in a Snap deal, which lost a lot of money for investors and really don't have anything to show for that. Similarly, there are other such, uh, there are many very successful companies, Policy Bazaar and ICICI Prudential and several other good investments also, right? So that is what a family office is like. And there are so many family offices you must have heard of, like the family office of Nara and Muti, the family office of, uh, you know, so many family offices are there, right? So the concept, was introduced by J.D. Rockefeller in the 1800s to manage his own wealth. And now we can see a very substantial number of family offices existing to manage the wealth of Indian promoters, right? So we are, uh, you know, it is expected by experts that the number of family offices in India will be growing exponentially in the next five to 10 years uh, if India continues to grow at a healthy rate, right? Which has happened so far. And if India continues to grow, Indian economy continues to grow, India will have a lot more billionaires, a lot many more millionaires who need family offices and private uh, banking and services, right? So uh, family offices do a whole range of things from budgeting, insurance, charity, family owned businesses, they might be running wealth transfer and tax services. Uh, a family office can be a single family office or multi-family office. Sometimes one family office is managing money of many different family offices. And, uh, you know, if it is an ultra wealthy family, then there will be a single family office, right? And uh, ac according to a 2018 report, there are 75 family offices in India today, right? And, uh, uh, you know, there are some of the examples. I have a list in front of me. Premji Invest, Aaron Capital, Barman Family Holdings, Catamaran and Ventures, which is family office of Naran Murthy, Artha India Ventures, RNT Associates, which is personal family office of Ratan Tata, Mahindra Partners, which is a key fund of the Mahindra and Mahindra Group, Three Sisters, founded by Mr. Rana Kapoor from Yes Bank, Ajay Piramul, uh, uh, Ajay Piramal SFO, Right. So these are these are like, you know, Piramal Group and the Siram Group privately managed office. So there are so many examples are there. Right. So family offices uh, create a lot of legal work because every time they're investing in companies or every time they're exiting their investments or maybe they're, uh, you know, buying even other products. So it's not that they're always uh, investing into in private equity or other things, usually a smaller part part of their investment is private equity or venture capital or anything. Uh, a lot of times they are investing in real estate heavily. Like for example, there are some Infosys founders whose uh, lot of personal wealth is heavily invested into real estate in India as well as abroad. So in that case, you know, they have, they generate work related to due diligence and uh, lease and license, live and license, lease, long-term lease and uh, in you know, co corporate leases and so on. So a lot of work. Uh, apart from that, there can be work related to uh, a huge amount of work related to uh, even uh, managing what is already there and ensuring that there are no foul plays in the investments. There are no uh, you know, 
con- there's an ongoing monitoring of the investments they have made and making sure that nobody is taking that for a ride right so there is work related to that there may be shareholder disputes arising out of it and whole uh, whole set of work including m and a investment law related work uh, definitely they might be uh, they might be even lending some of this money at inter- different kind of interest rates to different kind of people so even finance related work may be there right so it's a very interesting situation uh private banking right so private banking is a type of banking service which is exclusively designed to cater to the needs of uh, hnis and ultra uh, hnis right uhnis so these are basically various banks uh, who offer private services to their high end clients in the form of private banking services and usually every client gets a private wealth manager who caters to their specific needs so banks have also tried to get into this market and not lose all of it to family offices and trying to uh, basically uh, you know create services which are more uh, hands on and like you know more attention is given to these kind of large clients and uh, what do they do so account management investment planning tax planning cash flow and bill management risk management solutions uh estate planning custom credit strategies uh, apart from various products and solutions private banking offers clientele with preferential pricing higher interest rates prime interest rates on mortgages and loans uh custom financial services to hedge funds and equity partnerships so there are there is all these kind of uh services they provide and they might even bring investment opportunities and and you know opportunities to buy some debentures or other like give, they give a lot of advice related to that so banks who do offer private banking services in india include hdfc barclays icici uh, deutsche bank city gold etc so increasingly private banking is leading to a lot of legal work on one hand banks have their private banking department which employs lawyers to give various kinds of advice right to big clients related to tax investment loan securities agreements and legal liabilities so bank already have in the they have like you know large banks have legal teams right dedicated to private banking and and that is already there but there are also uh, uh, you know a lot of people who are so uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of people who are also doing other things like uh, uh, you know they, they they do not want to trust the advice of the bank entirely given large sums of money at stake so what they do instead is that they rely on uh, you know their own lawyers so well the individuals prefer to have their own lawyers who give them advice even if they are using the private banking service from a uh, uh, from a from a bank okay so some of the well known people who are doing uh, you know who are famous for doing uh, uh, this kind of practice in india bijal lajinkya from khaidan and company siril shroff from sirila machan mangaldas nishit desai of nishit desai associates rishabh shroff from sirila machan mangaldas shreya rao from azb and partners so all large firms as you can see and they are managing partners themselves get into this area of practice and and you can see their family members also sometimes are part of this practice so that should give you an idea of how important this is and of course there are others also doing this practice so so definitely a very important area of practice so what kind of work do you actually do so if you are in private wealth law practice right so what what is the different kind of work so one definitely that comes to mind is estate planning right so estate planning is extremely important because you know if you have earned a huge wealth and you created a large estate so then one of your concerns is that how will this be managed when i am gone or uh, after my death how will it be distributed amongst my uh, my you know maybe children or even other people or maybe somebody else altogether maybe so there are a lot of concerns sometimes you know rich people even have pets or they have uh, you know specific people 
people that they want to be taken care of sometimes you know there are dependent people who are maybe who may be disabled may have maybe unable to look after themselves maybe having extreme illness so uh, even those are concerns that how will they be taken care of later on so estate planning is an area of practice you know actually area of work for lawyers where you plan uh, there are even other professionals wealth advisors private wealth advisors who are uh, giving you advice on how to do your estate planning right but lawyers make it happen they give it the legal shape they maybe write and this is also a big uh, problematic area right just because you have made a will because you know even after death of people even if a will has been made it is registered even then there is a lot of uh, litigation done then people who are beneficiaries may get stuck may not get the benefit of the will and so on it happens a lot in india like if you look at the birla uh, case like the birla uh, dispute over inheritance of the Bir- priyambada birla's will the uh, litigation went on for decades and you know obviously people are concerned that if so if if i see if i love someone and i want to give my wealth to them i do not want them to suffer after my death fighting in courts in litigation right so estate planning is not easy and it has to be thought out and to do it in a full proof manner to avoid disputes to avoid complications is very very important right so lo- uh, very good lawyers are hired to give top notch advice in this and you know uh so this is one thing but there are there are even larger problems so you you may have if you have if you remember there was a huge dispute between the ambani brothers right so that is succession planning so after dhiru why ambani died and the ambani brothers were together for a while but when there was a point when they wanted to separate their business of the reliance empire right and there was massive dispute over this and it went on for a while and there were like mediation and the mother kokila ben ambani was involved in trying to help the help the two uh, sons settle the matter amicably and then finally the the entire reliance empire was separated then there was you know uh, the the anil ambani adag group and then all of that right so all of that happened and <clears throat> so so this is very important to understand right that uh, partition of large family businesses and in india in in india there are a lot of family businesses very large um, you know uh, family businesses somebody is saying others in in case of amachan mangaldas so absolutely amachan mangaldas and surya shroff uh, was the law firm and it was broken and you know then there was scam and sam but before that there was like exchange of legal notices and you know a big public fights over this and uh, and obviously like you know it was also mediated and settled eventually but there are uh, you know this kind of matters are big there's a lot of legal work involving partition of family business and succession planning so how will so in india there is a massive uh, you know number of very big businesses which are essentially family businesses owned by family and it's like passed down from generation to generation and there are other concerns also that just because somebody is in the family doesn't mean they will be able to run the business for all you know they'll end up shutting down the business or ruining the business like in case of you know anil dhiruvai ambani like you know all that he had he had like mukesh ambani and anil ambani started at the same place but uh, almost equal distribution of wealth and then Anil Ambani is almost bankrupt today, and Mukesh Ambani is like has grown like nobody else. So uh, you know, I think all of them had the same kind of uh, fortune, but some one person squandered it, and the other. So this is a great lesson for you know people who have businesses and they want to pass it on to the next generation. If it goes in the wrong hand, then everything goes to waste. and that is definitely a big concern for many people right so to do it right and and to not create rifts and all of that it's a big challenge and it is something that requires a lot of thoughtful 
work and, th- and a lot of legal protection, a lot of legal work so that it does not lead to problems later. And <clears throat> so, of course, you know, there is this concept of Hindu undivided family in case of Hindus. And, you know, there is a Karta who is the owner of this, uh, who, like, who is the, you know, patriarch, the head of this family. And he has a lot of powers to act on behalf of this family. But then it is possible that somebody says one of the co sinners, right? You have to be a co sinner one of the three generation people now women are also can be co personal so you can ask for a partition right i want my share carved out of the family business or a family's wealth and i want to go my separate way and this is your right as a co personal right and this is definitely a place where also lawyers come into picture to if give effect to the partition in a way which is amicable and sometimes not amicable, a lot of disputes happen over this, but you can file a partition suit in a civil court to get that partition done if the if it is not happening amicably or people are not agreeing and so on. Right. So lawyers are expected to make watertight agreements in case of these huge partitions. Right. So I don't think people really uh, these days run large corporations as uh, Hindu undivided family. I mean, it's not that the family owns the shares, right? Fa- shares are owned by family members. And then, but also you have to do it in such a way that the control remains with, you know, in a, you know it's, it's efficient to run the business and it's not inefficient. So those things have to be worked out. Okay. So another major area of work for private wealth lawyers is inheritance dispute. So as you can understand, right? So, uh, I mean, you know, from, from MIK, even if there's an MIK will split of assets, even in those cases, there is a lot of work for lawyers so that because there has to be agreements to back up whatever is being agreed. And apart from that, obviously, if it is a contentious, uh, situation, then it will be argued in the courts and there can be long drawn litigations and it can go on for decades. And, you know, many civil litigators in India have made their careers doing these kind of matters. Uh, drafting of wills, of course. Now, this is a more obvious one that, you know, drafting, if you are in a private will practice, definitely wills kind of, you know, is an important work. Management of trust. So setting up of trusts and management of those trusts, administration of those trusts. This is this can all come to lawyers, right? Um, so a private trust is a vehicle. So you can make a private trust, but sometimes they even make public child. Uh, but usually a private trust. So a private trust is a vehicle through which property can be transferred from one person to the benefit of another, and such trust exist to benefit named beneficiaries, right? The person who forms a trust determines the trustee beneficiaries, the property that will be governed and the rules would govern, which would govern the rights and duties of the trustees, also known as the settler or the author of the trust. Like that is the person, settler, author of the, trust, the person who's creating it, right? But the rights and duties of the trustee can be uh, governed by what are the terms of the trust. And this way you can ensure that uh, things are done in a certain way. So imagine that you have some pets and you are worried that after your death, if the pets will be taken care of by the other members of your family. So in that case, you can create a private trust and, you know, ensure that a sum of money is available and that somebody, you can appoint somebody to administer that trust or you can ad- appoint even multiple people to appoint, you know, administer that trust and make sure that your pet is looked after. A lot of times people have uh, minor children, disabled children, disabled dependents. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, there are people who are not, you know, in their, in, you know, they are not able to manage themselves at all, or they cannot make any decisions and such dependent relatives have to be taken care of. Or maybe somebody is in a vegetative state in the hospital and their medical treatment has to be continued. And I want to make sure that even if I'm not there, this is done. So I may want to set up a trust which takes over this work and uh, there's a corpus from which this work is done. 
uh, living will and euthanasia. This has become recently one area of work because a lot of people are creating living wills and there is a concern that if I'm in a vegetative state, I don't want to continue living in a ventilator or living you know forcefully kept alive when my you know brain death has already happened and there's a landmark decision by the supreme court in 2018 which uh, le which legalized the living will in india so but to setting up a living will is a quite a complicated process and uh, you need help of a lawyer doing it on your own is next to impossible so this is one side of the work, right? So this is like wills, inheritance disputes, and like you know partition and management of inheritance related trusts and so on. So this is all related to inheritance. The other side, you have uh, you know the continuous optimization of investments and wealth management, right? So they say that making money is easier, but to keep the money is much harder, right? So what kind of work is there? drafting investment and loan agreements right tax optimization so you might have to figure out how to minimize the tax on the on the corpus or on, on this on the trust or whatever family office etc what will private so this is this is one major area of work right for for private wills lawyers so they need to be good at tax they need to be good at drafting shareholder agreements investment agreements share transfer agreements business transfer agreements and so on uh, so uh, so these are more or less some of the areas of work and real estate definitely which i also mentioned because indian family offices tend to invest in real estate quite a bit so so that is definitely one area of potential work for if, if you are a uh, if you are in this, if you're interested in this kind of work. Okay, so uh, so this is what it is. And what we think is that in the, uh, you know, there's a lot of, in the, in the post-COVID world, right? Uh, there is a lot of work for these people. So there are a lot of people who are trying to bring their money back into the country. People who, had, who have earned money abroad or they had invested abroad, they're trying to bring their money back in a lot of cases. Um, there are people who have kept their money in tax havens outside India, okay, and so they are trying to bring it back uh, because to they want to help their existing businesses with that money. Promoters are also a lot of time stashing their assets into family trust as they know that, you know, uh, lenders can come after their personal assets so these are also things that uh, lawyers advise that you know if your business goes bad and lenders come after your personal assets how do you protect your family in such circumstances or how do you protect your dependents on such circumstances right so Vijay Malaya may have to run away to UK but you know Siddharth Malaya is still in India he didn't have to run away right so and and he i am assuming he is taken care of so if vijay malaya had good legal advisors they would have made sure that siddharth malaya is not in a very bad space right now we don't know for sure it's just i am making a conjecture uh, <clears throat> all right so also very interesting that a lot of uh, there is a lack of liquidity in the market a lot of a lot of assets are available at a cheaper price than ever and people are looking to pick up those cheap assets rapidly right so you know sometimes uh, that is also an area of work that family offices have started working on okay so if you want to uh, if you want to work in private with law practice it is very much possible uh, you know, you'll have to learn these kind of skills of drafting of uh, including all the all the work related to wills or in you know disputes, civil disputes, arbitration, mediation, and so on. Partition suits. You have to learn this kind of work. Uh, <clears throat> apart from you know due diligence, real estate, real estate due diligence, due diligence of companies for acquisition or investment, mm, loan agreements, and so on. Right. 
so so this is what it is uh, i am going to share one link with you all of you guys in case you know you want to know more and read more about this and you want to have a you know kind of a document that you can refer to later on right so here is a link of an article on this that i had written before so you can you can all refer to this there is interesting comment image management post death right of works of art created by a celebrity or artist yeah these are also potential way of work there is uh, you know there are people who are writing in their wills what will happen to their twitter account or facebook account or so on or whatever social media account instagram account i think people don't care about facebook accounts anymore but yeah yes an you know, instagram account or twitter account can be quite valuable and people are actually saying what would be done with those data simran nagarwal sorry did you say before that india has 6k hni and 75 family offices 2018 yes this is according to some reports and at the in the link that i have shared with you you will find further corroboration of this and it is written in that they over there as well okay so that's about it so if you have questions guys i'm happy to answer any questions anyone okay no questions oh wow great it's an interesting topic one question how much scope does does it have in india so that's a interesting question in our opinion we are seeing massive opportunities in india because you know the uh, it's na nature of capitalism that there will be some people who will have a lot of wealth and it has happened in the us it has happened in japan it has happened in china it has happened in every country U us uk brazil and it's a matter of time in india it's already happening in india you you know there are way too many people who have a lot of money the number of rich people is increasing in india by the day and uh, as the economy grow where how will it grow it will grow on the back of smes it will grow on the back of large corporations so if that is happening then there will be a lot of rich people and it is just inevitable and if there are a lot of rich people uh, then they will need family office services it's just a trend right now it's small right now comparatively but it's going to be very large going forward and imagine you don't need a lot of clients like out of the same 75 family offices you know even one of them can feed a mid sized law firm enough work you don't even need a second client you never want to build a practice with only one client it's too dangerous but i'm just saying that you know a few of these clients or even one of these clients would be like a massive addition right so that's definitely there and there would be other such you know rich people who are going to become rich going forward right right now they may be uh, running very successful companies and tomorrow they would sell their assets or they'll go public and things will happen which would lead to a massive wealth unlocking of their wealth and it's bound to happen over the next 10 5 years 10 years you can expect the number to quadruple and more and, you know it will become it will grow faster than the economy at least and much more than the economy does it inc include income tax rules and regulations what else topic can include it so income tax advice definitely you need to have a good grasp of taxation income tax well you know all of these things but global income tax the even even international taxation and all of that because then you will be a valuable advisor right but at the same time um there are tax lawyers who do this work who are specialized and uh, do this but at the same time as a personal advisor to ultra rich people you should be having you need to have a grip of and not only tax law like black money law you know um, very various issues would be there because uh, you know if you are going to invest abroad then how do you do it regulatory issues and all of that so bunch of things are there what will change for family businesses in a post covid world so that is there in the article but i have already told you like some things that will change are 
for example right now their priority lot of family offices and ultra hnis they are trying to bring money into india from abroad because if their money is sitting in a tax haven they want to bring it back they can use it to buy more assets in india which is cheaply available or they can use that money maybe to rescue their existing businesses if their business is struggling then one headache they have is that you know i need to protect my family's wealth right even if they're coming after my personal wealth my wife or my children or my other relatives their wealth should not be touched and it should be adequately protected and so on right so that will be interesting and insolvency laws you know bankruptcy all of that can affect them but there is a cut off period like for example i think ibc looks back two years but if the transaction happened before two years they will not question it so if i have transferred my some wealth or some property or some assets to somebody and then i go bankrupt after two years after three years after four years then this property cannot be touched only my personal property can be liquidated right so that's an interesting thing how does one do estate planning as it is as in which sector to park or invest money in what, where to invest the money what skills are required to be learned in this so there is private you know, there is wealth advisory services right so there are experts on this there are bankers who work on this investment bankers your you have even private equity analysts 